Seven of mine. Good man. Oh, it's loud. Obviously, this is a big fight week for you and the team and everyone. I'm curious, you know, some guys say, oh, I'm more nervous for other people's fights than my own. How are you feeling ahead of these weekends? Well, I'm, I'm not nervous yet, like, you know, we, but I do I do get nervous more for, for when yeah, people close to me fight or even just big fights in general. A big card like this as well as uh, fires me up, I get, I get nervous uh, fighting. I'm like, oh, you know, I get excited. Uh, in a, in a sense, and then uh, obviously with the boys, you, you get that that nervous, like you know, because you can't control it. When I'm in the octagon, I can control everything. That's why I think a lot of us uh, get more nervous watching uh, our friends uh, fight. You're obviously starting to become known as one of the guys with the highest fight IQ in this sport. So I'm curious, is that a bit of a blessing or a curse? Because you could sort of break down a fight better than most and be like, okay, my guy's got it, or is it a curse? Because you're like, oh no, he's got it. He's up against it here and there. Oh man, like uh, yeah, you you can break it down, but I mean, when you know so much about your uh, your training partners and all that, you know what I mean? So you're always going to, there might be a bias there because you know so much more about them. You know what they're really good at, you're right? And they're like, all right, even if this guy has this problem, well, I know he can deal with it here because I've seen it, you know what I mean? So uh, whether that is a bias, yeah, that's going to be, but, uh, you know, I've already did a breakdown of, of uh, the fight with the boys there and I, yeah, I'm pretty com confident in all of them. So I think it's going to be a clean sweep for them. It was a great breakdown on you know your growing YouTube channel, which yeah. we'll get free plug for you so there. Check but... it out, check it out. <laughs> but I'm curious for the for those who didn't get to see it yet, how do you break down this main event between Israel and Alex? Oh man, like uh, obviously Pereira is very dangerous. He's a uh, very powerful. Stylistically, again, like uh, he's, he's a very very high level kickboxer. So you know, but I mean, I still feel like uh, Izzy's uh, especially where Izzy is now. Uh, I think Izzy's evolved so much, and I, don't, I believe he's still the same fighter, which is still incredible, right? Like he's he's, he's one of the the top kickboxers. So Pereira's is still, still a killer, but Izzy's just going to be uh, be too good for him, I think. And uh, you know the, he's going to be aggressive. Uh, Pereira is definitely going to come forward, and I think he's uh, pretty hittable as well because he relies on them hands. He, he invites you to throw and, uh, and and catches you coming in, you know, especially with them big left hooks, but. We well, all know uh, Izzy's uh, good at landing and not letting you land back. So that's going to be – that's just his style. So I don't think he can change that. And uh, oh. I know Izzy, I know Izzy uh, is uh, definitely going to have that that fight. You know, he's got the fight IQ and he's definitely going to have the, the range control. And even in the pocket, I feel like he's going to be even more dangerous. How do you, how much of an uh, impact is the smaller gloves going to have on this one? Uh, yeah, they're always going to make, make a, a bit of a difference. Uh, but I think it's just uh, – all the other little things that, that are going to, you know, if there's going to be even more room. The octagon's quite big. Uh, and just, I don't know, kickboxing, you know, you're, you're, kick, you're kickboxing, right? Like, so the engagement's going to be uh, at a kickboxing, more kickboxing range. I feel like the MMA range is usually that little bit longer. And I think that's going to be the difference. While uh, Pereira's trying to go into that kickboxing range, uh, you know, I think uh, Izzy's going to piece him up. And then when uh, Pereira gets more aggressive, as he will, uh, to really try and put them hands on, that's where I think he gets uh, touched up even more. A couple for yourself, on yourself. Um, you know, this Islam fight, we saw a few tweets going around there about a contract needing to be signed. I don't know if you can break some news for us today or if you can't, but uh, is that still the plan, February, Perth, Islam? Of course that's the plan. You know, I want, uh, I want to go to the champ champ and uh, I think I'm in the, I deserve it and a lot of people agree and I can't wait, mate. It's fired me right up, you know what I mean? Like, uh, again, I know this... Uh, People look at a challenge and, yeah, it's a challenge. That's what excites me, you know what I mean? And uh, But, I mean, it's a challenge I know I'm uh, ready for, you know what I mean? Especially, I'm already – like I already had just Craig Jones here today, yesterday doing wrestling. Like I'm keen, man. I'm bulking. I'm eating uh, a lot of uh, calories at the moment. So it is good. I'm enjoying it. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I'm going to be a pretty stacked uh, fight night. Uh, so obviously we're looking at Perth. You know, we just got to get that signed and make that happen, and we will. So uh, expect uh, me and Islam to face off uh, – in February in Australia, which is going to be huge. I saw uh, your interview with Submission Radio, which I recommend everyone go check out, and you said, I'm so fired up for this one, it feels like I wasn't even fired up for the ones that I've had before me. I'm curious, what moment do you think you'll have that sort of like, yes, this is what I was fired up for? Is it when he takes you down and you get back up? Is oh. it the face-off? What, what, what moment do you think like this is it? Oh, man, like uh, even right now, I'm, I'm, I'm like that. But I mean, uh, going in again, uh, I'm preparing, like I'm preparing uh, to – for him to take me down, right? So that's how I meant to do prayer. I always do that. But I mean, there's so many layers before I even get there. You know, I'm, I'm, I, it's going to be hard to even get me down, uh, you know, and get me exactly where he wants me, you know, flat on my back. It's very, very hard to do. I'm very good at scrambling. And uh, again, these short legs are very hard to hold down, especially when I do so many weeks of just 
that, like, let's be real, a lot of people are like, yeah, we know his game. You know, people are like, oh, you need time to do it. I'm already good at that. Now you're giving me, uh, like, two camps to, to, to keep drilling this type of stuff. And again, like, I'm not saying, you know, people want to say he's well-rounded uh, and things like that. We'll see if he's well-rounded because I'm getting back to my feet. And let's see if his stand up is uh, up to up to what it he uh, you know supposedly people are trying to say. Well rounded, we'll see because uh, it's going to be a stand up. Because I know I'm getting back to my feet. Alex, over uh, right next, to Oscar. Uh, obviously, you said you want your division to be a little more active to kind of de like the featherweight division to determine an actual number one contender. So if you go up to lightweight and they ask you like which matchups would you like to see, how would you match make that top of the featherweight division? Well, there's a few of them that are just right there, eh? So it's a uh, I think uh, someone's going to be a bit disappointed. Uh, you know, there's a, definitely that top three, right? Arnold Allen, uh, Yeo Rodriguez, and Josh Emmett. And uh, everyone, any one of those guys that, that miss out on something that happens there, like, you know what I mean, is going to be pretty uh, disappointed. And if there's an the interim uh, belt and thing, thing, you know what I mean, obviously that person that misses out is going to be disappointed. So there's going to be uh, – yeah, so we're just uh, got to see what happens. But, I mean uh, – I've made it clear that I want to be active and things like that. And people keep questioning, like, oh, can you do two divisions? Well, I know for a fact one division can't get me busy enough. So why don't we, you know, focus on that? Like, let's be real. Like, uh, I'll, I'm willing to do both belts at the same time. And I think I can do it because I, I want to fight every three months. Easy. I'm like, that's what I want to do. I'm. In, why do you think I'm taking on... Yeah, I don't want to wait for this champ champ. I want to do it now. I'm in the best shape of my life. My, my, yeah, I'm, I'm at my peak right now. I want to take advantage of that and fuck some people up. So let's do it. And obviously, if you go up to she's the French. If you win the lightweight title now, you have a whole nother division that you have to pay attention to. So obviously, you said you you're a fight fan. You watch these fights just as a fan of analytical. But now, do you start have to paying attention to these lightweight fights a little more? Like Dustin and Chandler on Saturday, you have that one. You, you'll probably watch that a little more yeah. invested in, correct? Yeah, yeah, for sure. But I, I'm a. I'm a fan of the sport. I love this sport. So I'm watching all the time anyway. And the way my brain works, I'm always breaking down fights. So no matter who's who's in there, I'm breaking down and seeing what they're doing. Uh, but now I think I'm, there's going to be that little bit more personal sort of, you know, not only breaking down what they're doing, there's going to be that touch where it's like, oh, I would do this. Or, yeah, he couldn't do that to me, uh, which would be a regular thought. Um, them not being able to do things to me. So, but I mean, hey, look, yeah, definitely I'm going to have that sort of a uh, look at, at these guys, but that's exciting, man, because uh, there's so the, the lightweight division is exciting. There's a lot of big names there. Uh, I, I think it's very competitive, it's very stacked, but it's definitely a division I, I know I can handle. So, uh, yeah, looking forward to seeing what happens. Do you watch maybe Algerman's fights like that too? Because he's talked a lot about going up to Featherweight, especially if Marab, his teammate, earns that number one contender spot at Bantamweight. Well, look, like I said, I'm a fan of the sport, so I, I watch. Uh, do I think that's something? I, I haven't thought of that. You know, I know he's uh, touched on it, but uh, I didn't know uh, how serious he is with that type of stuff. But, you know, f from now, because you touched on it, I'll keep a closer eye. <laughs> uh, and then last one for me. Uh, Saturday is going to be Frank Edgar's last fight. He's in his MMA career. So do, were you a fan of Frankie before you joined the UFC? And do you have any memories of him inside and outside of the octagon? Well, who's not a fan of Frankie Edgar, right? Like... Uh, He's a man, an absolute legend. It's, I, I was talking to someone yesterday and saying, you know, that would have been a, you know, I want to take, not take out all the legends, that doesn't sound, but I want to fight all the legends, right? And obviously I want to win, but yeah, so take him out. But he's one of them, you know, because he's, he's definitely a legend. He was a legend in featherweight division and, and multiple uh, divisions. And uh, yeah, so that was a fight that really just obviously didn't end up uh, playing out how, how, how it was ever going to really work. But, um, yeah, definitely a legend of the sport, and uh, he's done some massive things. So, uh, yeah, very well-deserved uh, respect he has from everyone. Alex, over here. Uh, we spoke yesterday with Michael Chandler. Uh, I asked him about, you know, fighting for the title next. What does he think? What do he think about you moving up? And his response was that Islam's first title defense needs to be against a true lightweight, referring to either him or Dustin Poirier. Mm -hmm. uh, what's your response to that? Yeah, that's fair enough. Like I, I like uh, Chandler. You know, he's a exciting guy, and yeah, he does have that wrestling uh, factor and things like that. But yeah, you know I mean, like uh, obviously uh, you've got guys that have had shots at the titles and were pretty unsuccessful. Uh, so like you know, it's time for time for new blood anyway. But again, they're they're exciting, and you know, they're, I'm sure if they uh, keep winning and, and things like that, like they're going to be right there again. But um, trust me. He's gonna have big problems with me, so uh, don't worry about don't worry about that. He doesn't need a lightweight to to have problems. Trust me, I'll do 
more than okay in, in that division. Uh, you just spoke about Frank Yeager, a legend who retired, another legend who recently retired, Jose Aldo. Uh, a lot of people think he's the greatest featherweight of all time, but you beat him, and you also have this huge title defense. You got three wins over Max Holloway. Like, I mean, do you think you're the greatest of all time in the division? Well, I still look at uh, Aldo as a as a as a goat of the featherweight division. Obviously, I'm still you know planning to take take that right. Like, obviously, because I plan on keep you know, I plan on winning. And I, I want to defend, 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 you know. So well, I'm planning on getting just as much defenses as him. And I think, uh, especially when you look at the resume and who I fought, a lot of people are going to agree that, that I'm up there. So, but I mean, right now, th to have that many defenses like he did, even though some of them were in a different promotion, but they still consider them defenses. Um, yeah, so I've got so much respect for, for Aldo. He's done a massive things for the featherweight division. He, you know, he, he brought it, he made it exciting, he made people watch this division. And, uh, so I've got nothing but respect for the guy. But, yeah, I plan on uh, breaking a lot of uh, different types of records. And, I'm, you know, I'm already on a – I'm already doing pretty good. So, uh, you know, it's – we'll see what happens. But I think uh, you, you take this uh, champ champ, that's a, that's a massive step, right? And then we start talking about greatest regardless of the division. Uh, to add about that, you're – besides being the number one featherweight in the world – your number one ranked pound for pound fighter in the mm. world on most people's websites. Most people's websites have Israel Adesanya as number two. Mm. Any uh, friendly rivalry between you guys saying, hey, oh, uh, I'm not the top all. guy? Not at Definitely all. Like friendly, friendly. No, 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 not at all. To be honest, uh, look, man, it's cool to have the, the pound for pound, but it doesn't change me. Like, uh, you know, I got it. I'm planning, like, I'll be more than happy for him because like, I want him to go out there and kick ass, put him uh, lights out, take that number one pound for, for pound spot. I don't want bad things to happen to people so I can keep – like I don't need people – bad things to happen to people for me to look good or, or be at the top. Like I plan on doing all that myself and so so does he. So I want him to go out there kick ass. He takes that number one spot after a big performance, which I plan on, on him doing. I'll be nothing but happy for him. You know what I mean? So that's how, that's how I am and I'm sure he is as well. At the end of the day, it's just a, a thing, you know. We can share it. I would be pound for pound, he can. Then every time we win, we just keep changing. Why not? Yeah, I meant more. Pound kings, right? I meant more as a joke and we like busting. Yeah, I know about. what you mean. I know yeah. what you mean. Like we don't talk about that because again, the only time I ever really talk about is uh, with you guys. You know, it is cool. Obviously, what's cool about it is opportunities that come with it. Yeah, but uh, one day, one question I want to we touched on it before. So we talk about it. has there been a, uh, you know, obviously a champion that's defended so many times a champ, champ, and pound for pound number one. Have we had that? I think DC might have been there for a pound small, for bounty, pound for pound for number one, a small portion of time, yeah. And that uh, that mid defense, okay. Amanda, Sweet. Amanda, yep, a pound for pound with female as well. Yep, okay. Sweet. All right. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to think of what else do I need to do. All right. Hey, well, you're, you're well to wait, well to wait, Ben and wait. I can I can cut some weight. Ben and wait. I'm coming. Aljo, don't worry, you can stay there. I'm coming down. On <laughs> on that same similar one. top. I think the big one, Alex, is uh, the Anderson Silva winning streak, 16 straight in the UFC, which you're getting pretty close Ooh, to. Yeah. And Kamaru, oh, yeah. So, yeah, Kamaru a... lost that at 15. Mm -hmm. So that would be a longstanding one. Yeah, for sure. And uh, again, like people talk about uh, streaks and all that, and, like you hear people touch on, you know, you know, you're risking losing a streak and this and that is like, what, so you want me to just fight guy, uh, guys that I know is just going to be a walk in the park just so I can win a streak? That's, that's piss weak, I think, anyway. You know what I mean? That's not how I am. That's not what's got me to where I am. You know what I mean? If uh, I was like that, there's no way uh, just a regular bloke from a small town uh, was going to get to where, where I am. You know what I mean? There's no way. So the, that's just not my mindset. Uh, I want challenges. It excites me. As, I, as uh, we, we touched on it before and we're talking about this how fired up I am, how motivated. I'm doing things that I wasn't doing even in the Max Trilogy and things like that. That's meant to be a massive fight and it was just like another just another camp. The people uh, need to understand I'm always going to do what I need to do. I'm going to do it good. I'm always going to put effort because that's just who I am. But would I say I was excited? No, now I'm excited. I wasn't excited for the that type of stuff. I was just sort of going through the motions. And going through the motions is uh, – Full on for me because that's just how I am. But right now, it's just a whole nother level. It made me really think like, man, I wasn't even trying last camp. You know what I mean? Because the effort I'm putting in right now, so early, uh, again, it's, it's, it's fired me right up. And just one more for me, Alex. Um, 
you mentioned Oscar about the tweets and stuff. What like prompted you to do that? Is there any portion in the back of your mind that thinks maybe they're going to try to take this away from you and go for a different direction with you in Australia? Or do you have like certainties that this is going to be the fight? We're going to make it happen. Don't worry about that. So uh, <laughs> Australia needs a, a big fight. Me just defending would be great, but me uh, going for that lightweight title, taking that lightweight title on, uh, in Perth on home soil would be incredible. And that's exactly what I plan on doing. And uh, yeah, yeah, I put the tweets out just to, to make sure it happens. So yeah, I'll leave it at that. Alex, uh, just down here. Um, after UFC 280, Conor McGregor was a little bit critical about the, you know, the potential matchup between you and uh, Islam. Um, and then he kind of changed his tune and, and offered you some advice. There was a little bit of a back and forth there between you two. How did yep. you take that? Yeah, I didn't, uh, you know, I didn't know how to take it. At the start, it, was, it seemed like a little bit of a shot at me. And I'm just like, you know, like I had a bit, I'm playful with it. Usually with everyone, you know, I'm never really too serious with these types of things. And uh, yeah, then, uh, you know, he was a little respectful back, which threw me off. I was like, oh, no, I didn't expect that. I thought he was just going to be into me. But, um, but yeah, so, so I thought it was going to be, be fun. But, again, I'm, not, I'm a chill dude. I don't trash talk. You know, I'm pretty easy going. You cool with me? I'm cool with you. That's just how I am. Uh, well, he's, uh, you know, like some of the stuff he said. There was some stuff that I didn't quite understand. Uh, you know, but, but there was some things. Like, obviously, putting on size and all of that. Like, you know, I didn't have, the, I didn't have time to do that. Before, you know, I only had six weeks coming off a broken hand and things like that. So I couldn't do that for, for the backup. But now I can. Now I can uh, focus on that. Yeah, I've got the dietitian on board. That's what I mean by taking things to a whole nother level. Once I stepped foot in that cage and had that face off, I was that fired up, got, got home. Like, Let's get to work. Straight off the plane. Do you know how long that damn flight is? Got off there and the kids were at school. I was like, Fuck this, I'm going to the gym. So I went to the gym and that's just, just how, how I am. And I'm like, we got the dietitian working on uh, on the plan. I've got strength and conditioning happening and I'm eating over 4,000 calories a day, which is hard. I, I never thought I would complain about eating too much food. So um, that's something that, yeah, I actually uh, need to go eat straight after this. So I'll stop uh, yapping so I can do that. <laughs> Alex, you mentioned the trilogy with... Sorry, I was just going to follow yep. up with, you know, you, you offered to, to welcome him back mm -hmm. is that a possibility do you think somewhere look, uh, down the line yeah look it is you know everyone's going to always talk about um connor and ah, oh, they just want this money fight and all that yeah yeah of course yeah everyone's going to talk about that yeah it's big it's always massive any fight that you you have with uh, connor is going to be massive so we're, we're we're not stupid so we understand that but there's obviously you know i talked about things that i want to accomplish that's you know you got you know featherweight goats and pound for pound or whatever it is, all that type of stuff. You know, I've taken out every other – I've touched on this a few times. I've taken out every other uh, featherweight champion except for him. So, like, you know, to go up there, he, obviously he can't fight at featherweight, but he'll fight at lightweight. And, uh, you know, there's a, there could be an opportunity there and, and a massive fight to happen uh, and sort of uh, – even though I feel like I'm on my way of uh, staking my claim as a featherweight guy, you go out there and take out every other champion, you know, I don't think you need to do much more than that. You mentioned a lot of stuff in this presser about weight and um, you know your issues with weight. You're eating a lot now just to come up. You I would say an issue, but yeah. <laughs> famously, you used to weigh a lot more. Mm -hmm. Aljamain, right before you, was talking about how after his fight, he kind of seems to get a bit of a mental disorder a little bit and eats a lot, even though he knows he shouldn't be. Do you... Have any issues with you know overeating, eating disorders, anything with your? Uh, that they used that's something they used to do. Uh, I'll be honest. So like you know, if I give him advice, yeah, like try not to do that. But I mean that I think you will eventually change that because it's even obviously you said that it's uh, it's on your mind. So it used to be for me, and then all of a sudden now, even though I know I can, I still like oh, yeah, I'm going to go pick out, and then I'm still like ah oh, yeah that's enough. So my fi <laughs> the funny thing is it took me about 10 bloody years to, for my stomach to finally fucking shrink somewhere from when I was uh, 97 kg. And uh, now I've got to try and force more in, which is, uh, which is uh, a little, little harder because it never used to be that hard. I used to go through camps uh, hungry, always hungry. Uh, but now I'm – yeah, obviously now I'm all full from what I'm doing. But, I mean, you, you end up to training your body to, to you know, sort of uh, be able to – 
yeah, like to shrink the stomach, right? Like it took me 10 years, but I've eventually got it there and like, you know, mentally prepared for that. And then it was a uh, pretty, pretty easy, especially when you've got the right nutritionist on board, getting the right foods in uh, you, you'll be surprised how much you can eat. So, uh, it's not too bad, but if I could give him advice, I go, that, that'll change. And is there any concern for you maybe going back down to 45 after this trip into the 55 realm? No, not really. I think it's just uh, going to have to be a, a cleaner diet. Like I can, I can do it pretty easily with the water. And, uh, you know, I hold uh, maybe a little more fat that yeah, I could get rid of a little more fat and a little bit more water if I have to for, for featherweight. So it just means I'm just going to be a, a lot leaner and, and uh, more, more powerful. So uh, that's what I mean. I'm... F I'm talking about being fired up about this and people like, oh, you know, you're talking about winning streaks and, you know, you're putting all this stuff on the line. I'm going, again, that shit gets out me, me out of bed and the fighter I'm going to be because of challenges like this, if, you know what I mean? The featherweight division has no chance. Hey, Alex, right corner back here. Quick question for you. Speaking of when you were heavier, what influence did your time in the South Coast rugby league, playing forward, how did that shape what you bring to the fight game now? Ah, oh, man, like it's obviously a contact sport that's always going to be there. But I mean, there's a, especially for a position I'm in right now, right? I'm for going, uh, everyone's trying to sit there and talk about size thing. I'm like, I'm play front row. Like one thing that I can tell you right now to answer your question exactly and then touch on that is I've always been undersized. Uh, undersized. I've been a, a front row, which is, your heavyweight division, what you see, that's what a front row, row was meant to, meant to look like. That's who I was always up against. And trust me, I held my own. Uh, I was one of the, one of the, the best in, in, in my area, in our division, and um, you know, country rugby league and all that type of stuff. So that shows you that, yeah, I've been under, undersized and I've been underrated and you know, I've been the underdog plenty of times and I overcome it every single time. So I'm loving that people are going to, there's a little bit of doubt and they're like, oh, this, you know, this is a challenge. I'm like, oh, I can't wait because you're going to see a whole new skill set that I haven't really had to focus on because getting, you know, getting back to my feet has never been a problem for me because I do that with ease. That's why you see, even when people do take me down, I'm never, I don't train for that too much because I know I'm going to get back up to my feet. Uh, if people will say, oh, yeah, he's been taken down, go, just watch that carefully and watch how long I'm held down for. And now I've got a full camp of bulking up and just training that sort of stuff. Psh, it's just going to be a stand-up fight, mark my, 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 my words. Alex, looking at uh, the goal, your goal setting, it just seemed like it worked out perfectly in terms of the way you beat Max that last time. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure you could have fully committed to changing divisions. If it, it was just such a one-sided fight. Do you feel that way? It was just everything it seemed like went the way exactly you planned. Yeah, man, it, it did. It did. Like uh, Again, there's still camps. When I tell you like, uh, I might not be as fired up as I am now, there's still good camps. You know what I mean? We've got a good team around us that – you know, uh, that we, we study fights, what we think is going to happen. And then, you know, I'm the type of guy that will execute a game plan to a, a T. And uh, that's exactly what happened. I didn't even have to make an adjustment because I just stuck to, to what we thought would work. It worked well and I kept going. Even with a broken hand, I was able to keep doing that. But, but yeah, man, it's a, that was a perfect fight. I, that needed to happen. And that touches on to... People like, you know, why you do this? Why did I need to do the third max fight? You know what I mean? Like, obviously, there's still people doing it. But again, I was, I was 2 and 0 against the guy. I didn't really have to do it. But I wanted to do it because cause of that that second fight. Because of people doing this, they're like, oh, I don't do that because I know it's going to put me in a better position. And I know I'm ready. And I know that was the biggest challenge in my division anyway. So let's just do it because I love a challenge. Bring it on. Not to compare Brian and Islam, but, you know, there's been – even Islam went back to the, the height. Uh, issue or you know, but it's funny people are going to doubt you but you know to me Brian is world class yeah his, I mean one of the best in the mm -hmm. across the globe and you were able to overcome that and he had you in some pretty precarious positions it just seems like people can doubt you all they want but it seems like you're going to give Islam a who knows how to call this thing but mm -hmm. a very tough fight no oh, 100 percent. that's exactly right like a uh, I fight for every damn position for every a, a millimeter, not an inch, a millimeter, no matter where I am, like you need to literally kill me or like you know you need to put me right out. And uh, I'll be honest, <laughs> Brian was close, but again, it was just all I needed was that little bit of that little bit. You know what I mean? And then his arm gassed. My breath, uh, my breath held on. His arms gassed, and that's just the type of guy I am. No matter how deep it was, and again, I wasn't working takedown defense and all that. And I, the way that that all planned out, the way he like caught the kick, went down. As I was getting up, he's jumped me straight on. 
was incredible. Like I don't think you will you will ever see that timing or, or that ever happen again. Um, and if it does, you won't see the guy get out. I guarantee you, unless it's me. Uh, but yeah, man, it's a. Uh, you were touching on something uh, else there that. Oh yeah, the small thing. Like you know, again, I've been undersized my whole life. I love Korean zombie. Korean zombie. It's like you you'll find photos of him going. He's very small. Look what happened. I think everyone's probably said that to me. Look what happened. So uh, he's just going to be another guy. That's how I look at it. You know what I mean? Again, is it a challenge? Yeah, there's some things I need to focus on, but that's all I need to focus on. And it's something I'm very good at. So uh, he's going to have to worry about a lot more other things because, again, let's see how well-rounded it is because it's going to be up on the feet and uh, he's going to have to deal with uh, my footwork, my looks. This little guy will look uh, pretty big once he starts uh, puzzling you in there. Trust me. Thank you. Hey, Alex, over here. Uh, I feel like you're, you're the epitome of uh, the quote, hard work beats talent when talent mm -hmm. doesn't work hard. Um, like you, when you were coming up, you weren't the most popular, and, and now you're the champ, and, and you're the number one pound for pound. So how, how'd you really, or what, what's your perspective of, of going from, you know, obviously from here all the way from there, just through just really beating it down and, and putting in the grind and the hard work? Oh man, uh, I think I got, I got all, all, all that question. But uh, with uh, with what you were saying there, like obviously the yeah, it's hard work it beats talent all the time. Even talent that a talented guy that works pretty hard, you get someone that works hard enough. Even with a guy that works hard, you'll still take them out. You know what I mean? I'm that guy. Like I'm telling you, I've always been you know strong. I guess I wouldn't say I was athletically gifted. I probably always had some things that were were maybe special. You know, like resilience and all that type of stuff. But that's what I'll touch on. From all that hard work and fighting for everything, even when I didn't have the skill I did now, you know what I mean? And just uh, being resilient, durable, and just never never give up attitude. And you learn a lot doing that. You learn a lot about yourself and you you, you, you make yourself strong, you know, and in many, many ways, mentally and physically. Yeah, for sure. And just speak about real quick the power of now. You know, I always hear you say, you know, now is the time. I'm mm -hmm. in my prime now. Mm -hmm. You hear a lot of people saying, well, you know, one day I'll do this and, you know, one day I'll do that. But just uh, speak about how you feel just about the power of, of right now. Right now, exactly right. Right now, even when I had a broken hand and I needed to be back up when people think you're mad. But, yeah, I need to do that right now because I can't wait. I don't want to wait. I, if I wait, someone else gets in front and then I've got to go for champ, champ, maybe mid next year, uh, mid next year, maybe even later. I can't have that. I want it now. You know what I mean? I'm at my best right now. Uh, so I'll put myself in that position like I did and uh, and things will work out. Again, nothing's uh, confirmed, but it'll work out. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> All good? Thank you. Champ, champ, coming. <laughs>